Brian Dable has already come out and named Daniel Jones the starter for this NFC East matchup against the Washington Commanders coming up this Sunday. And on today's show, I'm going to tell you why Coach Brian Dable continues to fail the New York Giants, but more importantly, the diehard New York Giants fans. Before we dive into that, though, I want to try something new on the channel. If you want the Giants to bench Daniel Jones, drop your initials in the comments section. Treat it as if you're signing a petition. And I'll do this. If we get 3,000 comments of people signing the petition on this video, we will create a real petition. And I will send it to 1925 Giants Drive. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate everybody for stopping by here on doomsday of a Tuesday after the New York Giants were run off the field in an embarrassing fashion yet again. Look, there are so many talking points from this game, but the one that hurts me the most as a diehard Giants fan is that Brian Dable is insulting my intelligence and your intelligence, because he continues to sing the song of Daniel Jones gives us the best chance to win. And I just do not believe that that is the truth. And I believe that we are all smarter than the BS that Dable is trying to sell us. I want to go to this tweet right here. Shout out to Mike underscore NYY on Twitter. Awesome follow. Let's take it from the top. We will never see a quarterback like this again. Daniel Jones is and was one of a kind. He started two and six or worse in five out of six seasons. He's passed for more than 20-plus touchdown one time in six seasons. That was his rookie year. He is 24-42-1 as a starter. He is 1-15 on prime time. He has not thrown a touchdown at MetLife Stadium in six straight games, and he has not thrown a touchdown on primetime football in now 1,000 in 72 days. No QB with that type of resume will ever, ever, ever get this many chances again. And I'll say this, the New York Giants continuing to go and ride the boat of Daniel Jones as the starting quarterback for this organization is them telling you that we quit, that we do not care, and we are waving the white flag. And I could tell you this much. The Giants' defensive players, the studs on this team, they know that the New York Giants' offense is what is holding this team back, and they are understanding that the Giants' offense is essentially being given up on by Brian Dable because they are not moving on and trying something else at the quarterback position. And I feel like he is losing the locker room. I did a video 15 days ago. The Giants need to bench Daniel Jones before it becomes too late. That was 15 days ago. It is officially too late. There is turmoil now in the locker room, and it is also now bleeding onto the sidelines. Brian Burns, after the game, told the media that this team needs to grow up. Brian Burns came from the Carolina Panthers, a team that is at the bottom of the NFL just like the New York Giants. He knows what a bad team looks like, and he is saying this team needs to grow up. That's a shot at your head coach. What about Dexter Lawrence? We've got to play harder. Dexter Lawrence doesn't think that everybody's giving it their all. Dexter Lawrence called out Deontay Banks after the game, after he called him out last Tuesday because of his lack of effort against the Philadelphia Eagles where he should have been benched. So you've got Brian Burns and Dexter Lawrence questioning the leadership of this football team, the growth, the maturity, and most importantly, the effort. That is an indictment on Brian Dable. What about this quote from Dabes? I believe in the process and the people that we have. You don't believe in Daniel Jones. You don't have to lie to us anymore because we don't believe. Anybody with a brain doesn't believe in Daniel Jones. But I believe in process is what he says. All right, Dabes, let's talk process because I'm a process over results guy. And I don't believe that you trust your process because your process has continuously been flawed since you've taken this job. Let's just go back in the last week. Three parts. You benched Joshua Zudu after one game at left tackle. 
after he was your swing tackle all offseason long. You actually moved him from guard to tackle because you said you believed in him at that swing tackle spot. If all it took was one game, one start for you to move off of Josh Azudu, you never believed in him, meaning you didn't trust the process, and I am now questioning what that process even is. Let's stick on the offensive line and talk about the process. Evan Neal, who has played in one snap this year, which was the swinging gate play, what a call, Brian, was the starting right tackle this offseason. Remember, you signed Jermaine Illuminor because of what he did at right tackle to then move him to left guard. And then he told us there wasn't a setback when we reported on this show there was a setback. Then Evan Neal somehow got hurt again randomly, and then you moved Illuminor from left guard to right tackle. So you go from Evan Neal being your starting right tackle in the offseason to having played one snap in eight games. What's the process there, Daves? What about you bench Deontay Banks in the second half of the Monday Night Football loss against the Pittsburgh Steelers? I went back and watched every single play of the first half with a solo focus on uh, Deontay Banks. He didn't get benched because of lack of effort. I didn't feel like I saw any lack of effort. Did you bench him because he missed two tackles, one on George Pickens and one on uh, Najee Harris? Maybe. So you're now benching him because it was performance-based, right? You benched him because he missed tackles. You said you needed him to tackle better. At least that is what Mike Garofolo of the NFL Network reported. So you're going to bench year two corner, Deontay Banks, after bad performance and a half, but you're going to continue to roll with Daniel Jones as your starter, who is scoring 14 points a game, the second lowest total in the National Football League. Where's the process there? So you can bench a corner because you aren't getting the results you need, but you can't bench the sweet prince, Daniel Jones. You know why? Because he's doing the most he can to be the best he can. Way to try to cover color in between the lines, Daniel Jones. It's a joke, but this is what's funny. Daniel Jones gives us the best chance to win. That's what you said, Brian Dable. Quite literally seven days ago, you said Daniel Jones gives us the best chance to win. When Daniel Jones was the starter for the New York Giants in 2019, they started the year two and six. When he was the starter in 2020, they started one and seven. When he was the starter in 2021, they started two and six. Then they went six and two. Then they went two and six. And then they went two and six again. You know what we call that? An outlier. Something that is the opposite of the trend. The trend for Daniel Jones is if he is your starting quarterback to start the season, it is more likely than not that you are going to start the year 2-6 and six or 1-7. and seven. But you know what? Record, it's not all his fault. Let's just talk about how explosive and how much points the Giants are putting up under Daniel Jones. Because if Brian Dable believes that Daniel Jones gives him the best opportunity to win, he must see something that we don't. Well, in 2019, the Giants averaged 21.3 points per game. 30th. Ranked scoring offense. In 2020, the Giants scored 17.5 points per game. 31st scoring offense. Remember, guys, there's only 32 teams in the league. In 2021, the Giants averaged 15.2 points per game. 31st in the NFL. And in his best season of his career, when he threw 15 touchdowns, the Giants averaged 21.5 points per game. 15th in the NFL. Then 30th last year and 31st this year. Stop lying to the diehard fans of this football team. Daniel Jones does not give you the best chance to win. And at this point, playing Daniel Jones at 2-6 and six, when he has a $25 million injury guarantee in his contract is a slap in the face of New York Giants fans. You are calling us stupid, and you think we are dumb enough to believe the nonsense that you continue to utter at the podium. It is a joke, and Brian Dable has failed this organization, but more importantly, he's failed you, the diehard New York Giant fan. Should the Giants clean house again? I still believe in my heart of hearts somewhere that Brian Dable can be a good head coach, but sometimes these head coaches, they need their second stop to be that spot. They have to learn from their mistakes of the first spot, and I'm just not so sure 
that he can get the CEO part of the head coach down. Let me know your thoughts. Type Y for yes, type N for no. We'll talk more about this, and we've got to talk about Joe Shane as well. But first, I got to give a major shout out to today's sponsor, DraftKings. As you guys know, I host our New York Knicks Now channel here at Chat Sports. We've got DraftKings running over there as a sponsor, and I want to br- I want it to bring it here to New York Giants now. The NBA is finally back. A new season means new ways to get into the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Who's draining threes from beyond the arc? Who's crashing the boards and grabbing rebounds? Get behind your favorite players and the prop bets you can make on DraftKings, the home of NBA player props. First time, new DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Every point counts with DraftKings Sportsbook. Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code NixChat. That's code NixChat for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY to 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777. Visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gambling resources, see dkng.co. Slash B B A L L. Shout out to DraftKings. Smitty, what do we got tonight in the NBA, my man? All right, so obviously we don't have any NFL action tonight, so I had to go to the association. Give me the Pelicans' money line on the road against the Golden State Warriors. They're banged up, no Steph Curry. Mavericks plus five at Minnesota on a back-to-back, but Luka didn't play very well last night. I expect a bounce back from him. And then Kings minus six and a half on the road against the Utah Jazz. They're just a better team, and the Kings put up buckets. Give me them to have a big win tonight as well. Are we laying this, or are these just all straight bets? These are all just straight bets. Obviously, same game parlays are fun, but profitable investments. We want to go. We want to go at least two and one here, and we'll make money on the day. Shout out to DraftKings. Use that promo code NixChat, and you're gonna get five dollars for free, or five. You're gonna get two hundred dollars for free once you play your first five dollar bet. All that information will be clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. All right, the thing that I am at the sticking point with the New York Giants and their brain trust is this. I'm not so sure that Joe Shane and Brian Dable can get the QB right. And at the end of the day, that's really the only thing that you should care about when you're a rebuilding organization and you do not have a quarterback. I also want to say this. Back to that quote, I believe in the process and the people that we have. Well, your process had you pay Drew Locke $5 million. Do you not believe in him to give him a chance? You continue to just lie and throw tomatoes at us. Let's start with a list of bullet points. Why do I think that there is serious questions about Brian Dable and Joe Shane being able to, A, identify the right quarterback, B, come up with a plan to select that quarterback, C, develop that quarterback, and D, establish a winning team around that quarterback? Number one, because I don't think they understand the salary cap and the implications it can have because they gave Daniel Jones $92 million guaranteed. It was actually $82 million guaranteed. But what did Joe Shane do? He restructured his contract before he even played a game with that new deal, causing him to push more money into the future, which is then going to cripple this team next year. So I don't know if you understand how much money and percentage of cap you can give to the quarterback when that guy does not elevate anybody around him. Number two, you paid Drew Locke $5 million. You hand-selected Drew Locke to be your backup quarterback, and you don't believe in him. You don't have faith in him to even trot him out there as your starting quarterback when the season is two and six. I don't know what the stats are, but I am more than confident that there has never been a team that is two and six that has made the NFL playoffs once the season has been expanded to 18 weeks. I know that for a fact. So the goal of the playoffs is done. We're playing for next year. Why don't we find out if Drew Locke's that guy? Maybe because you don't even believe in him, but you just gave him $5 million to be the backup to Daniel Jones. Number two, number three, we're already on number three. (coughs) You passed on Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson wanted to be a New York Giant. Russell Wilson took a visit to the New York Giants organization. You know what Joe Shane told him? Yeah, we'll take you on the veteran minimum. We'd love to have you here, Mr. Unlimited. 
But you got to be the backup to Daniel Jones because Daniel Jones is better than you. Miss. You also passed on Sam Darnold. You could have went out and paid Sam Darnold $10 million and invited him to be your starting quarterback over Daniel Jones. But you passed on that, and now Sam Darnold and the Vikings are 5-2 and two and are going to make the NFL playoffs. You also passed on Justin Fields. You could have traded a fifth-round pick for Justin Fields. He had the Steelers at 4-2 and two on the season. Daniel Jones has won four games over the last two calendar years. You passed on him for Daniel Jones. You also passed on Baker Mayfield. You could have had Baker Mayfield for nothing. The Carolina Panthers had him practicing as a practice squad defensive lineman. And you know what you said? You know what? We're just going to roll with Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones gives us the best chance to win. Then, when you were looking for a backup quarterback this offseason, maybe a veteran, you passed on Joe Flacco, who reignited the Cleveland Browns last year, and he is now the starter for the Indianapolis Colts. The Indianapolis Colts have benched Anthony Richardson, who was a top five pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. It is now October of 2024. Daniel Jones has been this team starter for 1,800 days. They're the only organization that refuses to try something else. You also passed on Jameis Winston. Josina Anderson reported that the New York Giants had interest in Jameis Winston. Just not enough interest to bring him in. Jameis Winston just beat the Baltimore Ravens this past week. They also benched Tyrod Taylor for the Don Bosco prep kid. You benched Tyrod Taylor for Tommy DeVito. You actually thought that Tommy DeVito gave your team more of a chance to win than Tyrod Taylor. And the funniest part about that is you then tried to circle the block and re-sign Tyrod Taylor this offseason. And you know what he said? Go F yourself. You also chose Daniel Jones over Lamar Jackson. And you may say, well, Marshall, this isn't true. Remember when Lamar Jackson wanted a new contract and they placed the type of franchise tag on him that allowed a team to sign him if they were willing to give up two first-round picks? There were rumors that we talked about on this channel following the 2022 NFL Combine that the New York Giants were interested in Lamar Jackson. Just not enough to pull the trigger. You essentially chose paying Daniel Jones over giving up two first-round picks and paying for Lamar Jackson, who's probably going to win his third MVP. At the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. The only way that I can keep Brian Dable and Joe Shane in charge of the New York football Giants is if I truly believe that they can identify, have a plan, and build and develop a franchise quarterback. They have given me zero evidence. They have given me zero trust that they can do any of those things because they paid Daniel Jones $92 million. They then hand-selected Drew Locke as the backup quarterback, and they don't even trust him enough to go out and pay him. Look, I do think that Joe Shane has done some good things. I do think Brian Dable can be a good football coach. But at the end of the day, this team is stuck in the mud until they get a franchise quarterback. And I just don't have that much faith that either Joe or Dabes will be the guys to identify, select, develop, and build around that next franchise quarterback. Make sure you are following me on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on IG at Marshall Green underscore. Hit me up over there, and we'll see you later.